Good day, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Israel is responding with force, calling the situation a state of war. Throughout history, religious and mythological texts have prophesied several events regarding the end of the world. Today, we are witnessing an increase in natural disasters, persecution of believers, and global instability, leading some to believe that these signs indicate the imminent arrival of the end times. In a recent development, Israeli officials have come forward with a startling revelation amidst the ongoing war, shedding light on specific prophecies that they believe will soon be fulfilled. But what is this terrifying end-time prophecy, and how will it impact all of humanity? Join us as we uncover the final warning from Israeli officials that has terrified the whole world. Countless religious scholars and devotees have engaged in fierce debates and disputes, striving to persuade believers with their conflicting ideas and beliefs. Amidst these theological and ideological clashes, there is one prophecy that has resounded across centuries, embraced by followers of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Baha'i Faith, and even Zoroastrianism, the prophecy of the Messiah's arrival. Israel, the birthplace of three of these major religions, assumes a pivotal role in the fulfillment of this prophecy but has encountered significant opposition from those who oppose its realization. Recently, Israeli officials have issued a final warning that has sent ripples of fear throughout the world, leaving us with no choice but to take heed. Keep watching as we delve into the terrifying end-time prophecy, its intricate connection to the reconstruction of the Third Temple, and the opposition posed by the Antichrist. To comprehend the full magnitude of these events, let us retrace our steps to Israel, the very place where this captivating narrative began. Christians, Muslims, and Jews all regard Israel as a Middle Eastern nation situated on the Mediterranean Sea, revered as the historical Holy Land. Its capital, Jerusalem, holds a special place in the hearts of believers from these religions as it is home to numerous sacred sites such as the Temple Mount, the Old City, the Western Wall, and Mount Zion, which are of great significance in Judaism and Christianity. For Christians, Israel is deeply intertwined with the life and death of Jesus, known as ISA in Islam, who is revered as one of the messengers of Allah. According to their holy book, certain prophecies are anticipated to come to pass, signifying the second coming of Jesus. One notable mention in the Bible is the construction of the first ever temple, known as Solomon's Temple. King Solomon erected this temple on what is now called the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. It was built as a tribute to God and existed between the 10th and 6th centuries BC however, it met destruction during the Babylonian siege of Jerusalem under the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar. After the demise of Solomon's temple, the second temple, later known as Herod's temple, was constructed. Initially, it served as a modest place of worship but underwent a grand redesign and reconstruction during the reign of King Herod the Great, featuring impressive walls and columns. The second temple stood for over 580 years until it was once again destroyed, this time by the Romans during their invasion of Jerusalem. Following the destruction of the second temple, the idea of building a third temple emerged. The Jewish people were determined to construct a temple that would not be susceptible to destruction by external forces. Their vision was to create a temple that would not only serve as a sacred place of worship but also surpass the grandeur of its predecessors. However, the task of building the Third Temple is far from simple as it has faced opposition from many countries, particularly Islamic nations, for numerous years. Presently, Jerusalem is shared with Palestine, and while some countries recognize West Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, they regard East Jerusalem as the capital of Palestine. This division is due in part to the presence of the Dome of the Rock, an Islamic monument situated on the Temple Mount. Jewish visitors are discouraged from entering the complex, and worship by Jews is strictly prohibited. Additionally, some scholars have cast doubt on the long-standing Jewish belief that the previous Jewish temples stood on the same site. This claim has stirred controversy and prompted further investigations by researchers and scholars. Interestingly, their inquiries have led to a captivating discovery. It has been revealed that the Al-Aqsa, a prominent Islamic structure, was constructed atop a Jewish ritual cleansing site. 
What makes Jerusalem hold such great importance for the three major Abrahami religions, and what significance does it have to the rebuilding of the temple? Jewish organizations and movements dedicated to the rebuilding of the Third Temple have long been engaged in fervent efforts to realize their goal, tirelessly advocating for the construction of a new sanctuary on the revered Temple Mount. However, to truly grasp the magnitude of their unique struggles and triumphs, it is essential to delve into the profound significance of Jerusalem within the context of all three Abrahami religions. Jerusalem stands as a city of unparalleled religious importance, not solely for Judaism but also for Christianity and Islam. Its historical and spiritual significance is deeply entrenched in the beliefs and traditions associated with each of these faiths. For Judaism, Jerusalem holds the esteemed distinction of being the holiest city as it is intricately intertwined with the history and religious identity of the Jewish people. According to Jewish tradition, Jerusalem is the chosen place where God manifested His divine presence on earth. The Western Wall, also known as the Wailing Wall, is an embodiment of this sacred bond. It remains a revered site where Jews congregate to offer prayers, thereby expressing their profound connection to God and their ancestral heritage. Moreover, the Temple Mount situated in Jerusalem is believed to be the very location of the first and second Jewish temples, rendering it a hallowed site of worship and pilgrimage. Christianity too bestows huge significance upon Jerusalem. The city is closely associated with the life, crucifixion, and resurrection of Jesus Christ as documented in the New Testament. Numerous pivotal events in Jesus's life transpired within the confines of Jerusalem. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre, situated in the city's old city, stands as the traditional site of Jesus's crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. This sacred edifice ranks among the most consequential Christian pilgrimage destinations worldwide, drawing millions of devout believers each year. The Via Dolorosa, traversing the old city, is heralded as the path Jesus traversed while bearing the weight of the cross. Additionally, the Mount of Olives to the east of Jerusalem holds profound significance in Christianity as the spot where Jesus ascended to heaven. For the Islamic community, Jerusalem occupies a position of great reverence as the third holiest city following Mecca and Medina. Its religious significance stems from its association with the Prophet Muhammad. Muslims believe that the Prophet undertook a miraculous journey from Mecca to Jerusalem during the night journey, ascending to heaven from the Al-Aqsa Mosque situated on the Temple Mount. The Al-Aqsa Mosque, regarded as the third holiest site in Islam, serves as a place of prayer and spiritual significance. Standing alongside it is the iconic Dome of the Rock, a revered Islamic shrine. The Golden Dome of the Dome of the Rock stands as an architectural and religious symbol of Jerusalem's profound importance in Islam, the significance of Jerusalem to these three religions has not only shaped their religious practices but has also exerted a profound influence on the historical and geopolitical landscape of the region. The city has long been a focal point of religious devotion, conflict, and aspirations for sovereignty. Its intricate nature, characterized by overlapping religious and historical claims, has served as a wellspring of tension and disagreement among diverse religious and political factions throughout history. Jerusalem has borne witness to the rise and fall of innumerable empires and civilizations, each leaving an indelible mark on the city's tapestry, from the ancient Israelites and Canaanites to the Romans, Byzantines, Arabs, Crusaders, Ottomans, and countless others. Jerusalem has remained an alluring prize for conquerors and a vibrant center for religious and cultural exchange. In the present day, Jerusalem remains a city divided along religious and political lines. The Old City, with its majestic holy sites and labyrinthine streets, serves as a microcosm of various faiths coexisting within the confines of limited space. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict has added an additional layer of complexity to Jerusalem's significance, with both Israelis and Palestinians laying claim to it as their capital, tirelessly seeking to establish sovereignty over the city. The status of Jerusalem continues to represent a contentious issue in peace negotiations and international diplomacy. Now, moving on to the topic of the Third Temple and its construction. The Jewish community, particularly the Sanhedrin, 
has embarked on an ambitious endeavor, the construction of the Third Temple. This monumental project encompasses various preparations, including the cultivation of farmland and forests, all aimed at fulfilling the temple's requirements. One crucial element in rebuilding the temple is the production of a red heifer. The ash of a red heifer, when mixed with water, plays a pivotal role in purifying Jews, allowing them to participate in temple services. Obtaining a red heifer is no easy task, considering there were only nine used in purification rituals over a span of a thousand years between the first and second temples. Rabbi Haim Richmond and other knowledgeable rabbis from the Temple Institute have taken on an ambitious mission, using modern scientific technology and seeking the expertise of a cattle farmer to produce a flawless and unharmed red heifer. Breeding a red heifer is no simple task, it must be born in Israel and be entirely free from any physical imperfections or flaws. Additionally, the red heifer must not have been used for any work, particularly plowing, as it needs to remain untouched and dedicated solely for the purpose of temple rituals. Rabbi Haim Richman's determination knows no bounds, and he has diligently studied various ancient books and employed different scientific methods to achieve this delicate process, however, this is just one requirement for the temple, and there is much more to come. Another critical aspect is the training of the Kohanim, a special group of priests led by the Sanhedrin and the temple movement. They undergo thorough training to learn the proper actions, mannerisms, and use of equipment required in the new temple. Furthermore, the construction of the new altar, essential for offering sacrifices, must take place at the original site atop the temple mount. The altar's design allows for easy dismantling and reassembly in another location until it can find its permanent position. You might be wondering what fuels the Jewish community determination to undertake such an arduous task. The answer lies in their historical circumstances. Muslims currently control the Temple Mount, prohibiting Jews from entering or worshipping inside the location of the previous temples. Consequently, the Jewish community has resorted to extraordinary measures to establish a sacred place for their worship. Orthodox Jews view the reconstruction of the Temple as the only solution to the challenges faced by the Jewish people and the world at large. However, a significant hurdle presents itself in the form of the control exerted by Muslims over the Temple Mount. Reclaiming the Mount requires political action rather than legal measures. When traditional approaches failed, Israel's Judicial Council ruled that the decision was beyond the scope of the law, and alternative approaches should be explored. International organizations, regional states, and countries outside of Israel may serve as mediators to help find a solution. It is crucial for leaders of different faiths to collaborate and work together to facilitate the realization of the temple reconstruction. The violence has spared no one, not even hospitals. The international community and humanitarian organizations have vehemently condemned Israel's actions due to the continuous bombardment of the Gaza Strip and the resulting loss of innocent lives. Calls for a ceasefire have echoed across the world, and protests have taken place in various Middle Eastern countries and beyond. Given this unexpected turn of events, the prospects for cooperation in the rebuilding of the temple have been profoundly impacted, hindering progress and delaying the realization of this monumental project. What other prophecies are associated with the reconstruction, and what role does the Antichrist play? The recent warning by Israeli officials was in line with the instructions of the Hebrew Bible. Let's explore the fascinating prophecy outlined in the Bible, specifically in the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation. These ancient texts mention the appearance of an individual known as the Antichrist. Revelation 13 suggests that this enigmatic figure may emerge as a future political leader. According to interpretations, it is believed that the Antichrist could potentially form an agreement or covenant with Jewish leaders, possibly granting permission to rebuild the revered Third Temple. This interpretation implies that the Antichrist would persuade influential world leaders to support the construction of the Temple with the intention of claiming credit for this grand project. The Jewish community is particularly attentive to any attempts to wrongfully take credit for this significant undertaking. The journey to rebuild the Third Temple has been a captivating endeavor, merging ancient customs with modern technology. 
As plans progress and conversations unfold, the pursuit of a united future founded on respect and understanding becomes increasingly vital. Will the red heifer, a significant element in Jewish rituals, be reintroduced? Will the Temple Mount witness a remarkable transformation? Only time will provide answers to these questions. Ever the collaborative efforts of diverse communities from different backgrounds may serve as the catalyst for this ambitious project. However, the Third Temple is not the only prophecy gradually coming to fruition. Let's embark on a historical journey back to the 8th century BC when King Hezekiah undertook a remarkable project, the construction of the Salem Pool, also known as the Pool of Salem. This pool served as the sole source of fresh water in ancient Jerusalem, ensuring a constant water supply even during times of war. King Hezekiah's engineers accomplished a remarkable feat by carving a path through solid rock spanning an impressive distance of about 2,000 feet from the Gion Spring. The water would flow twice a day, cascading from the Gion Spring into the Pool of Salem. The Pool of Salem, measuring approximately 53 feet in length, 18 feet in width, and 19 feet in depth, was a combination of natural rock formations and man-made masonry. Unfortunately, when the Babylonians attacked Jerusalem, the Pool of Salem fell victim to their destructive rampage. It took nearly 70 years, during the time of Nehemiah, for the walls of Jerusalem to be rebuilt and for the Pool of Salem to be restored. Subsequently, the pool underwent further reconstruction and expansion during the reign of Herod the Great. It became a gathering place for the impoverished and sick who sought healing through its refreshing waters. Due to its proximity to the temple, the Pool of Salem held great significance during the Feast of Tabernacles, a joyous and meaningful occasion in Israel. The Feast of Tabernacles, instructed by the Lord in Leviticus 23 verses 34 to 43, aimed to commemorate the Israelites' liberation from Egypt. For seven days, starting on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, the Israelites were required to dwell in temporary booths or shelters. This celebration served as a reminder for future generations of their ancestors' humble abodes after their liberation from Egypt. Feasts occupy a cherished place in Israeli tradition, serving as poignant reminders of pivotal historical events and symbolizing the cherished value of freedom. The water from the Pool of Salem played a vital role in the ceremonial rituals of the Feast of Tabernacles. Due to its proximity to the Temple, these sacred ceremonies formed an integral part of Israel's cultural and religious heritage, establishing a profound connection to their past and reminding them of their transformative journey from bondage to freedom. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation, it is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my future videos.